Neil, two weeks off for the international break. There's been a lot of chatter during it about concerns of players going from bubble to bubble and whether they, they pick up positive tests or not. Has everybody come back safe and well, first and foremost? Well, we haven't, Paddy McNair's not back yet. He, he, didn't, he got back last night about 7.30, so we won't be seeing him for about another hour. So hopefully, you know, everybody else got a negative test. So we're delighted with that at this moment in time, obviously. Is there a genuine concern as manager now with these international breaks and players jet-setting all over the world? Well, there's got to be, haven't there, really? Uh, you know, we've just got to look at Liverpool, haven't you, with Mo Salah in it. You know, um, it, it's just, it's so easy. I think you forget at times just how easy it is to pick it up. And, uh, you know, it's, we've just got to take as many precautions as we can still because it's such a, you know, it's still thriving at the moment, isn't it? And obviously, far from ideal in a, a week when, arguably, we've got the two informed teams in the Championship coming together in yourselves and Norwich. Yeah, I mean, we're looking forward to this. There, are, You know, they've always been a good side with Daniel. I like Daniel. I think he's a, a good manager. He never gets too high or too low. And uh, it's a lovely club. Um, in that down that part of the country, nearly went there once. So it was, you know, I weren't far away, uh, but it is a nice place. And we always, um, you know, it's always a good game, I think, because you know what you're going to get, and uh, I'm, I'm sure uh, Norwich are the same. How close when you say you nearly went there? Uh, in the last two, I was. Yeah, in the last, they gave it Bruce Rioch at the time a while ago, into it a few years ago. I remember. A few years back now. I remember filling a. I remember filling a big form in, and uh, they wanted forty questions or something before you got your interview. You know, and I went there and I sat around the big table with about ten people and Delia and uh, the doc, the old club doctor, and and they looked at me and they said, "Well, Mr. Warnock, do you think our fans would like your style of football?" That was the first question. So I looked at everyone in the eye all the way around the table and I, and I said. Uh, well, yeah, I think they'd love to win games. But I knew then I didn't get the job. I knew I ain't got the job then. <laughs> so it was a quick interview. Short and sweet. Yeah. <laughs> um, you, you talk about the, the job Daniel's done down there. He, he's found himself in a position that you've experienced a few times in the past when you've got to move players on to um, adjust finances accordingly, and yet he's found a way to mould a team that bounces back and wins, especially after what was a a difficult season in the Premier League from last year. Well, what they've done over the last few years with going into the Premier League, they've, they've, they've invested heavily in players. So when you come to release players, they've still got a, such a good value, you know, and uh, some players might not even be right for the Championship when you've been in the Premier League. So at, at some stage, you might be better off, you know, cutting your losses. So it's always been a club. It's always been a club that supported the manager and the managers that succeed, they'll always be the ones that look after the board, you know, if that makes sense. And I think they've just got a happy medium. And when you look at the results for both yourselves and Norwich, are we now looking at two teams that have sort of found their identity this season in the Championship, that know what they are and play to their strengths accordingly? Well, I don't think there's any shock in, 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 in or surprise in what Norwich are doing. Uh, they play the same way whatever division they're in. And, um, you know, we always expected the three relegated teams with the the wage bills that they have, etc., and the players that they've got to to be up there. I think we're probably the surprise of everybody um, because I don't think anybody expected us to be up there. But we're enjoying it, and uh, you know, like I said, we look we, we're in, we're looking forward to pitting our wits against what Ronnie Jepson said. He thinks it's the best team that he's seen this season. You know, so I'm looking forward to it. You look at the last four games that the two sides have played this. This season, I think there's been one goal scored between you in those four games, so probably on for a three-all draw this weekend. Well, if we score three goals, I don't know what I'll be doing. I'll be doing somersaults, I would imagine. Um, it's just difficult, you know. You, you know, you look at the strikers that Norwich have got. If they get our chances, they will score a lot more goals than what we have. If that makes sense to you, uh, we've had some very good chances and we haven't put them away. Whereas, you know, your pookies of this world put them away without thinking. And I think that's the difference, really. As you go, as you go higher, you, you have to take the chances, the percentage, of the chances that you get. And just finally, from me, if I can Neil, a lot of talk again this week about concussion, obviously dementia in football, given <clears throat> what's happened to much of the team of '66. Now, you've been in the game many years. I've got no doubt you've seen training techniques 
change over that time, heading the balls in, under the spotlight. Do you have concerns uh, as a manager, seeing what you've seen, knowing what you know now? Have you changed um, to accommodate think, those concerns? Yeah. Or? I think everybody has, really. When you look at the, you know, I, listen, I know it's not 100% guaranteed that dementia is caused by that, but when you look at the type of footballer that are getting it now from the olden days, you know, I mean, for example, I was going to ask Juicy to get me Dave Watson's number uh, because I played with Dave Watson at Rotherham. Now, he was my first pick every time I had a five-a-side because he was like four men on his own. Every time a ball come, he headed it. He went for, you know, he headed it 30 yards, 40 yards. Dave. He was the best header of a ball I have ever seen in my life, Dave Watson. And, and it's sad, you know, I looked at a little bit on news last night and I saw Penny, his wife, with Dave. And, uh, you know, it, when you think in training, you know, every day he was doing that with, with 30, 40 balls. So, you know, we never thought of anything like that in those days. But the sooner they do the investigations into comparing footballers, ex-footballers with ex, whatever they are, in whatever job they're in, you know, we we'll compare the... The, the, the brain, etc. then the sooner, because, you know, it's obviously that the, the main ones that I can remember have all got it or all had it, you know, it's, um, so, you know, it can't just be, um, you know, pot luck. I think it's, uh, I think it needs looking into. I do believe that um, now that they've agreed to this nine, nine subs, whatever it is, which, whichever we, I think is wrong, I do believe that if there's nine subs, we should have, we should be allowed to put one player on for five minutes if they get a head injury, while the doc looks at it in depth rather than just rushing. Uh, I do think that's got to come in as quickly as possible. That now, uh, with what's going off, and there's no reason why it doesn't come in now with nine subs. It's not as though you're going to use one. You know, you you can have a five minute period or something like that, so the doc can assess it in a in a good time away from the on the pitch under pressure from the referee, under pressure from his teammates. Um, and I think that should be the next step forward, personally. Appreciate it, Neil. Best of luck this weekend. Thank you. Mark, can you come in now? Apologies, you didn't come in first, mate. All right, yeah, no worries. <clears throat> sorry, Ellie, all right. sorry, Mark. My fault. You know, <laughs> Duke's <Jewish's laughs> fault. <laughs> um, this is the, the start of a, a really hectic schedule now, isn't it? It's two games a week from... From here on and until Christmas, yeah. um, you, you've spoken a lot about your squad, obviously throughout the season. But do you feel this is the real test of it now? Yeah, I do. I mean, I think we've lost uh, we lost Marcus Brown on on, on Tuesday. Uh, he's going to be a couple of weeks um, to a hamstring injury, and you know, uh, it, it was the last time that we really pushed them on Tuesday. Uh, whereas you know they're going to be getting games which you push yourself in a game every time. You know. So, Especially certain positions, so um, it's going to be a big test for all the, the all the squad and and the staff really to um, to try and look at players that are fatigued and who might need a, a break that you're not you know you're not aware of when you watch them on the field. So we've really got to you know do things that we've never done before now. I think to keep on top of it. How difficult will those decisions be for you when it comes to? certain players because for example Paddy McNair we know has played a lot of football in the last couple of weeks when he hasn't been with you but we also know how important he is to you so how difficult will it be when you have a player who you you know is really important to your side but you're starting to worry about their workload well I mean you know you know what I've said about the Irish um, this week um, uh, you know I think I think if, if Paddy didn't take free kicks he probably wouldn't have played every minute of every game Um because that would look like the best way that they could score a goal, you know, if I'm honest. So as a manager, you want that in your team. But, you know, the amount of running he's done in midfield um, in those three games, I mean, the, the first game was a fact. We all wanted him to win, obviously, in that first game and get into the Europe, you know, Europa um, competition. Um, but once that didn't come off and they had the two friendlies, I, th I, I just presumed he'd only play in one game because there's nothing to play for. But to play in two games like that and, and uh, him and Dallas, uh, you know, for me, it's just a, a, a mistake. I, I can understand a young manager wanting to get a result before you, you go off for a few months, you know. But at this time, of this, this stage of the COVID, 
Um, I, I think it was it was a little bit immature, really, the decisions that were made. I think selfish and immature, really. Do you feel in a bit of a difficult position then with with uh, Paddy and, and Norwich this weekend? Because clearly, you know, the, the two teams in the best form in the division, and you're only three points behind them. So it, it, obviously, it's a big game for you, isn't it? It is, but you know, fortunately for me, Paddy doesn't really uh, raise a gallop when he plays for me. He plays. <laughs> He plays at the back and he plays with a fagging, so it, it's not the same. <laughs> um, you have increased your squad slightly, haven't you, in, in these last couple of weeks with Duncan Watmore. Tell, tell us what it is you like about Duncan and what, he, what he's going to bring to things. He's just been a, a, a refreshing um, new face around the place. He, he, you know, he's quick and direct and, and um, he's fitted in really well. He, he played in the England under-20s or 21s with Tuba. So it was nice to see them... You know, going back, to, uh, reminiscing and things like that. But on the on the training ground, he's improved over the two weeks. He's got better and better. The first week, he wasn't um, what I would say up to you know anywhere near up to it. But then the the couple of weeks, he wanted to give it a go. Rather, he had some good offers away away from here, um, but he wanted to give it a go. And and I'm delighted that we've given him a chance. All right, it's only a short contract, but you know he doesn't have to do that much to impress me if he carries on as he's been in the training field. Do you see him as a striker, as a wide man? What's your, uh, your mainly as a wide man. I think as a, you know, at, at the moment we're having to play almost full-backs as wingers, you know, and we need a little bit more to create for strikers in that area. Um, and we will for the rest of the season. So we, we are looking at wide areas. Um, one international we haven't mentioned is George Savile, who obviously missed the game against Brentford and then he, he's... Uh, left the, the uh, international camp as well. What's the situation with George? Is he available for you at the moment? Yes, he's available. He's available. Obviously, he's had some personal problems in, in the family and uh, uh, we've tried to give him every support that we could. And, uh, you know, I knew how important the Irish game was and, and he, he, he got over, to, you know, but before we got to, when we before we played at Brentford, uh, uh, you know, I told him that family is more important than bloody football, you know, and to, to get off home. Uh, I never even thought about him on that Friday and Saturday. Um, he decided to go across to Ireland, I think, on the on the Tuesday, played the game, and then came straight back. And uh, you know, uh, and I think now he's he, he's probably looking forward to playing. Actually, I would imagine, because he's had that much, you know, um, he's had that much um, sort of in, on his mind over the last um, ten days. I think that uh, it might be almost a relief. Brent Hall will be looking forward to playing. Is he? Is he going to be? Well, is he up to speed yet? After this, this yeah, he's up to speed. Yeah, he's up to speed. He was breathing through his uh, proverbials this week. Um, you know, it's, it's difficult when you've been out a few weeks to catch up because the training has been intense. But he, he's done well. He, you know, he, you're going to get little niggles here and there. You know, um, he's missed the odd day of training, but um, no, he's. I think he's looking forward to getting back into the pack. Really. I spoke to Ben Gibson earlier this week. Obviously, he's coming coming back to face his old club for the first time, and and he, he's adamant that he looks at, at, at you as, at Middlesbrough as promotion contenders. Do you think he's right? Um, well, I mean, I've, obviously, we spoke to Ben about coming with us at one stage, you know, in the summer. Um, but I think I, I think it's a little bit too early for us. I think I think the the main men are the the the, the teams that came down and the ones with the big squads. You know, I think there's a, I think there's five or six above us, really. But I think below that, I think we're, you know, we've got a, a good chance of of hanging in there on those playoff positions. Um, the lads are all responding. They're all, they all know that in the next nine games, some of them's going to have to play out a position. I would imagine um, to help me out because we've only got we've only got the one or two options in certain certain positions. But they all seem to be mucking in at the minute. You know, Tavernia, for example, I'm playing him in midfield, wide right, wide left, you know, uh, wing back. He played, he played everywhere for me at the moment and never moans. Well, he moans, but not about his position. He moans about everything in life, does Mark. <laughs> but uh, but he, uh, he didn't moan about on the field. Great. Well, uh, good luck this weekend. Thanks very much. Thank you very much. Dawn, please. Dawn, where are you? Yes. Hi, Neil. Hi, Dawn. Hi. It says Andy, but it is actually me. Yeah, don't so worry, look. Sorry for the confusion. Um, Mark was just mentioning Ben Gibson there. There's another uh, sort of borough boy coming back as well, Jordan Hugill. Um, does it does it make it more difficult, do you think, to face a team that has former borough players in it? 
Oh, I don't. I don't think so. It's like me when I go back to my old clubs. You know, I think I've had that many. It's nearly every other week. I think you want to do well, don't you, against your old clubs? Um, and I mean, Jordan scored that cracking goal last year that won the game. Um, where was it last year? QPR. QPR. Yeah. Um, so I, mean, I would imagine he's looking for, but he might not even be playing. You know, we just don't know, do we, on that? Um, you know, I think um, I think Ben's heart will always be at Middlesbrough um, but life goes on and he has to make a, a, a name for himself you know wherever he can and Norwich is a cracking club so I'm pleased for Ben he's a good lad um, but we'll be just thinking about ourselves really we don't think about promotion we you know we we were just glad we're not at the other end of the table and, and we're looking at to hanging at the coattails of these top six Um. You obviously picked up the Manager of the Month award for the championship, but you've decided to donate it uh, to charity. Tell, tell me about the thinking behind that. Well, I think it's just at this moment in time, it's such a horrible thing, this disease, this COVID virus. And I just thought it was, you know, I've, I know I'm not being blasé when I say I've got 10 others. Um, so there's only so many places you can put on the balcony, on the old thing, isn't there? And I just felt our fans have been fantastic to me since I've been here. So I just asked if it... I didn't know whether they would let me, but I asked if it was possible to let a supporter have it, you know. And, and then the Butterwick Hospice is such a great cause, really. Uh, and we've been surprised that, the, you know, we thought we'd try and get a couple of thousand for them, and we've got, I think, up to now, over five and a half thousand. It's, uh, it's fabulous how everybody's mucked in, you know. And, and we're going to give a... I've, I've just organised yesterday. We're going to do... Uh, I've got 20... Um, signed photographs so we're going to put them in as, as runners up you know sort of thing because we've had so many people I can't just let one winner out of all that lot so I got all the lads to sign these photographs yesterday and uh, they'll be going out to 20 lucky people as well but we, I can't say how, how grateful we are to the, them it just shows you at a time like this what kind of supporters we've got really everybody's mucked in and, and the hospice is you know is a really fabulous cause and I'm looking forward to going down when, when we're allowed to and, and uh, you know, seeing the staff down there. Oh, they really would appreciate that. I've been there a few times myself, I know that. Um, just finally for me, um, the government announced a bailout for sport yesterday, but football was not um, among the sports to benefit. What do you make of that? I think there must be something in the pipeline with the Premier League. I can only think of that, really, because, you know, it's, it's not rocket science that... Uh, if we don't get this um, financial support in the next, in the next, I think in the next few weeks, really, um, I know of two clubs th that are talking about struggling to pay at end of November uh, the wages, uh, and that's only going to get worse. So, uh, I think there will be some sort of a bailout, um, you know, from the Premier League, and 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 I think it's got to come from them. Quite rightly so, you know, the money that's involved. I know they're missing out as well, but, you know, they're going to miss for a season, aren't they? And then they'll be back to normal. Uh, you know, th there's a lot of clubs need help. Were you talking, when you mentioned those two clubs, are you talking about clubs in the Championship or, or below that, League One, League No, two? below that, yeah, below that. But I would imagine there's one or two in the Championship, you know, that rely on heavily on individuals. You know, my old club at Rotherham, for example, you know, to, th their income comes from the gate. The gate and the and the social, you know, the, the hospitality part of it. So th they must be absolutely distraught at the moment, and uh, so you know because they, you know, they don't get massive crowds, and it's a great family club. So it's people like that I feel sorry for, and the sooner it comes, the help, the better. Neil, thank you very much, and very good luck at weekend. Thanks, Don. Oh, Chris. Hiya, Chris. Hey, Hiya, Neil. How are you doing? What you got him on your wall for behind you? Oh, uh, these are the officers, corporate ITV, and all. Oh, that. I thought That's it really was a. I thought it was your lookalike then. Thought we were comparing <laughs> I you. Know about that. I, I would take a lookalike of that salary. I tell you. Yeah, I do. I do. Um, <clears throat> I won't ask you whether or not you've been watching it. Um, I'm sure you're far too busy to watch that sort of stuff. Um, hey, just hey, on hey, Gibson, Neil. I was nearly in it. Were you? Never you mind. So carry on. <laughs> You'll have to tell me that one another time. Um, on Ben Gibson, how close was he to staying with Middlesbrough this season? 
No, it wasn't really close. I mean, there were talks about it, but financially, it didn't it didn't make sense really. Um, it, you know, you've got to look after your own family as well, and you know, I could understand where where Ben was coming from. So it it didn't really get down the line, if I'm honest. No, I suppose though having him training at the back end of last season and, and perhaps over the summer, you must have been licking your lips, hoping that you could have kept him. Yeah, I mean, when he was training with us, it made me realise how lucky I was to have Dale Fry. <laughs> I used to say I used to say that to him as well to to Ben, but, but yeah, he's that. a good player. Yeah, um, and just just on the on on uh, the question from Dawn about the, uh, the the trophy that you're raffling off for the the Butterwick Hospice, I guess that just shows how in these desperate times how how connected the club is and how important it is to the local community. I think you've only got to look at the messages, you know. I mean, my wife, I, I, I'm not a computer man, you know, my wife said, somebody said, thank you, Mrs. Warnock, for letting him come up, you know. <laughs> so it's cheered us up a bit as well, you know, some of the messages on there. Um, I think everybody needs cheering up at this time. And I think if you can put a smile on people's face or you can make group happy, and I think this got people talking about the club in the right way, uh, the charities, charities are fabulous, you know, at this time of the year as well, coming up to Christmas. You know, every hospice in the country needs our help, really. And uh, it was just good. You know, the, the the players all agreed to it. You know, they all thought it was a good idea. And then, fortunately, the FL agreed and, 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 and Sky, didn't they? Because we didn't think they'd, they might not allow us to do it as well, but they did. So I'm thankful to them as well. Yeah, absolutely. Fantastic. And just last question, obviously, compared to last season, you're under a, a different kind of pressure at the moment, you know, when you look at where you're sitting at the table. Is it nice not to sort of be worrying and looking over the shoulder? Uh, I never really worry, if I'm honest. Uh, you, when you get to my age, every, next, you know, every game is a, a, a bonus, really. So, yeah, I mean, I want us to play well. Um, I'm looking forward to the games every, every week. They're a good group. I know there's going to be problems along the way. But I don't think there's anything that we can, you know, that, that we can't solve, and we can give ourselves a good season. That's what we want to do: give ourselves a good season without a worrying all too much about that bottom end, you know. And uh, and as we go on and, and get more confidence, then you just don't know, especially if you can hang in there till after Christmas. I think if we could be where we are now, um, come uh, you know the end of December, beginning of January. Then you you might start me getting to say that we're we're in the you know we're in the pack for it, but at the moment no, we're just trying to hang in there. And I I take it that's obviously what you've you've said to the lads. You haven't talked about promotion or playoffs or anything like that with them. Not at all. No, no. I've just told them that you know this could be my last game next week, so make sure we do well. <laughs> you know, it's all right for them at their age, and not hey. not to put my heart under too much pressure. Enjoy. Thank you so much. Have Thank a great you. game.